Today we're going to be doing a short video on work planes and how to create the basic work planes that you might be uh, utilizing in your development. So when you first start this whole work plane process and you click under construct, you get overwhelmed by there's so many options. Well, we're going to focus on just a couple of these work planes just so that way um, you can accomplish the tasks that you need to get going. The first one we're going to talk about is probably the most common one, which is offset work plane. And what that allows you to do is take a work surface and offset it a distance away uh, from the existing location. So you can use two options associated with it. You can see that I've opened up my origin list here and we can work with the original X, Y, Y, Z, X, Z positions, or I can use any of the flat surfaces on the object. As long as it's a flat surface, I can project a plane from that surface. So this particular plane is used a lot for creating uh, offsets and um, lofts in the development of models. So let's go ahead and grab this surface. And you can see the blue arrow appears. We just left mouse click and hold and drag the blue arrow. And we're going to go out 3.3 five zero inches and what that allows us to do is give us a specific distance I can also go to a specific object so if I wanted to take this plane and, and move to a, an existing uh, another existing object I can do that also so that's 3.5 inches now just to give you a quick idea of what you can do with this you, this particular plane now is a surface we can actually work on that so we can use the sketch tool put it on that surface and we're actually drawing on the sketch plane which was on the work plane and now if we create a circle and I go back to the home view you can see that that circle is 3.5 inches away from the original object now what makes this nice is that typically when we finish the sketch we can use the loft command and this loft command allows you to create a transition from any shape object to another shape object as long as it can determine the, the number of data points to connect it will uh, accomplish a loft so going from a circle to a rectangle not that difficult for the software to do when you go into from between two complex surfaces it's a little bit trickier uh, using the loft tool so what we did is we now just created a new transitional fitting that's three and a half inches long and we can choose OK but that's one way to utilize that uh, work plane now the second way is tangencies you know when you're dealing with a rounded object uh, you've got a tangent environment that um, makes it difficult to drill a hole or create a, a cutout or a slot in that rounded surface and so utilizing the tangent work plane so tangent plane is what we're focusing on uh, it wants you to select a surface which is the rounded surface so when you pick the rounded surface it then locates it as close to where you picked in that quadrant so this is at zero zero on this you can see the quadrant circle here if I pick more towards the top it would have laid it flat on top so it picks it close to that orientation now we can rotate this along and around that circle so if we say we wanted to go negative 45 degrees uh, or 45 degrees you know if I type 45 it rotates it down um, because of the the positive negative aspect so if I go negative 45 it rotated it back up on top of the object so this allows us to create uh, an entity actually on the edge of the object so you can see that the work plane is now tangent it touches at one single point that surface and so that makes it a uh, excellent tool to be able to um, create custom geometry on a rounded surface so we can go ahead and say okay and, and in this case I can create a sketch on this work plane so now we're looking at this object and again I can just do something really simple 
uh, on the center line here I'll just create a circle and we'll go back to the isometric view that's a bad isometric view so we'll look at this isometric view so you can see where the circle is and I'll finish the sketch and we'll go ahead and do an extrude cut through the object so we'll take it and we'll cut through the object uh, again um, this makes it really easy to to visualize what you're trying to accomplish so we're doing an extrude cut through that object we'll accept it and you can see now at that 45 degree angle it created a very difficult hole um, and the surface is associated with that hole at that 45 degrees so those are you know some of the things that you can do with work planes both the offset and the tangent now you can also as part of this construction is create axes and an axis is basically a center line through the uh, a circular object you can also develop work planes through two edges or three points so if you went through two edges, one of the options you can do is pick the, an axis as an edge and we'll pick this uh, object as an edge. And you can actually see that the work plane is not flat, but it actually goes from the center point out to that edge. And again, it gives you a, a unique working surface. So it's, it's a, a surface that you didn't have access to before, but you do because you're able to create that custom geometry. So that's pretty much the basics of how to create and utilize work planes uh, effectively in Fusion 360. Have a great day, and we'll talk to you soon.